All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Back with another video. We would be remiss if we didn't cover all the many facets and aspects of this so-called DNC convention in Chicago. I said months ago, the nerve of them going to Chicago and thinking it was going to be peaceful and all good after dumping thousands of illegal immigrants in Chicago, after all of the violence that the people in Chicago live under, what would make them think that they would have a peaceful rally in the shot? Another aspect is, when I show you this clip, you're going to see that there is a large population of people in the confines of the United States who are totally dissatisfied with this puppet regime, this so-called government of the people that doesn't represent the general aspirations of the people. Do you people on the left actually think that people will stand by idly and watch you teach their children about gender reassignment do you think people will stand by and watch their whole way of life destroyed through fascism disguised as democracy? Do you think people will just stand by and watch this country given over to global elitists who will have no respect of person when they become in full control? Now, I did a video yesterday on Roland Martin the Democratic Shield, who claims to represent Black Americans. But the first night of the Democratic Convention, he was ran down on by a Black activist, Jamal Green, because the things that he was, was saying about that man from his YouTube channel were highly offensive and aggressive. And You've seen a lot of that from the left. The left claims that conservatives are a threat to democracy and are hyper-aggressive. But all the aggression and hostility has been coming from the left. You know, they wanted to call Trump Hitler and all these different things, and he's going to put you back in chains and these different things. But it's those very people saying that that are fomenting the violence and the chaos that you see in the country. They are paid propagandists and activists who are being used to misguide the uninformed to vote for policies that will be the demise and destruction of this country. There was a lot of trolls in my comments yesterday, and they were all butthurt Democrats. They were trying to play identity politics and pull a race car. But when you ask them a simple question, like me as a grandfather, I stand against teaching my grandchildren about transgenderism and things of that nature while they're in primary school. I stand against leaving the borders wide open for all kind of foreign nationals from China and Africa and Venezuela, from prisons from outside of the U.S. to roam our streets freely and to get more benefits than rights than the average American citizens and the veterans. So what we're seeing is the pushback because people think that they will be able to stand on the sidelines and hurl their insults and push their debaucherous narrative on the citizens of this country. And they think it will go unchallenged. That's not how patriotism works. That's not even the, how the American creed. I even had so-called black activists and race baiters still trying to play the race car as if they don't realize that this is a problem for Americans, black Americans, white Americans, 
Latino Americans, Asian Americans, people who have come into this country, country legally and American citizens who are born and bred here, who have their voice being silent about the things they don't want in their lives. And yet you call it democracy when that voice is criticized and marginalized while you push this nefarious socialist agenda down our throats as if we don't understand the American creed. We don't understand the aspects of survival, survival of the fittest. You know, Roland Martin is a prime example. He comes and he talks all reckless and crazy to other men, but yet he's one of the most unfit, unprepared men if it ever came to combat. And the people who are screaming, oh, we need to be respected and protected. Who's going to protect you when it becomes total chaos? Will you proudly step out there with your blue arm in the face of all this dissatisfaction with your policies? Or will you become the new target, the new enemy of the state? These are a lot of things to think about when you see that the Democratic Convention has, be, has turned into chaos barricades and police and the Chicago inhabitants protesting, pro-Palestinian protesters, everybody is coming out against the left. And if you are on the Democratic plantation and on the left, you are going against God, Bible, and country. That's what you're doing. Because everything that's coming out of the Democratic Policies seem to be anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-religion. It reeks of population control and socialism and communism and every kind of other ism that you can throw and push at the American people. Is this what you want? Do you really want this chaos that you're about to see? I don't think you do because you're going to be looking like Roland Martin was looking a deer in the headlights when he was confronted with somebody a little bit more serious than him. Do you think these pro-Palestinian protesters who've been protesting all summer while the bombing is still going on in Gaza, how long do you think that you will have peace when you have a government in play right now who are fomenting war all around the world. America has so many enemies at this point that how can you even think that you could survive if we be divided against each other? A house divided will not stand. That's for sure. And if you're on the Democratic side and the left, rest assured, God is not on your side. He's not. Because you're running a whole campaign on abortion, gender identification. Your nominee says she's going to come out with price control, which means she's going to tell you what your goods could be sold for. That's communism. So I'm not going to talk to you much longer. I want you to see what's really going on in Chicago. Everybody with eyes could see what was coming when they went to Chicago. And this is only day two. So this is for fair usage under the 1976 Copyright Act for education and commentary. And you ask yourself, is this what you want? Because things are escalating fast. What does it look like in October, in November? What are we heading toward? Seriously. And are you fit for it? Are you built? Are you built to take over the citizens and the patriots and to force feed them your LGBTQ agenda? Do you think that the patriots will let you swap out the American flag for a rainbow flag? Because Obama did fly the rainbow flag over the White House. And people seen that. And we're dissatisfied. Look what's to come. 
Check out these clips. in that area. Now they're opening the... Yeah, they're pulling us through. All right. The pinch point has been broken. They have opened an entrance on the north side of the fence. And they're uh, throwing people through. Trying them to get them away from the scrum that's occurring on Washington Boulevard right now between the police and the protesters. Although I have to say, as I look around right now, appears to be, uh, I don't see any active fights, I don't see anybody on the ground, I just see a lot of police officers, I see some protesters back there, I think some of the protesters have actually exited the area, so it's unclear whether they're going to be taken into custody, there's a guy standing on the fence, or along the fence, uh, attempting to climb it, police just instructed him to come down and walk through the, uh, the new open area that's been created to allow this. And this is all going on in Chicago under the so-called black mayor, Brandon Johnson. That was our identity politics when those Chicagoans voted him in, only for him to betray their interests and to turn the city over to immigrants. The same thing in New York. The same thing in Atlanta and everywhere they put in play black boule bourgeoisie puppets to act as if they speak in the best interest of black Americans. And the only reason that I'm even making it about race in this particular comment is because those shields do not speak for us. They don't. They have totally become tools of their oppressor. And they like to hurl out terms of Uncle Tom and bootlegs toward conservatives when black people have always been conservative. So who is really the traitor? Who took a side with the Dixiecrat, with the Democratic Party, who created the Ku Klux Klan, who fought tooth and nail to keep you enslaved and in bondage, then found another way to enslave you mentally and make you an enemy of your people. The Joy Reeds and the Whoopi Goldbergs and the debacle that comes out of Hollywood that paints black people in a narrative to make us look subhuman. Do you think that they really can be among us as brothers. But they got a whole nother problem. These immigrants that you empower, these Palestinians and these Somalians like over in, uh, I think it's Milwaukee with Ilhan Omar, where they have a, a strong and thriving Somali community. Just like here in Detroit over there with Rashida Tlaib and the Arab population that get more benefits and money and funding than the average black American. They're angry and they're here and you empower them. You empower them over the citizens. That level of betrayal almost reeks of treason. This is what you're looking at in the Democratic Party. Proud to uh, exit between the two barricades on the north and south sides of the street. You hear some of the protesters who are yelling at the police, shouting, the whole world is watching as this unfolds. Okay, thank you. We're going to get a, a look at uh, Nate's vantage point. Nate, what are you seeing uh, where you are? Hey yeah, guys, um, back out here live from our vantage point, we've seen at least three people be detained and appeared arrested by police. You see police struggling with one guy right now who continues to resist. There are five or six different officers trying to get him to comply with their request, which is to vacate this. Have you noticed you don't see this type of chaos at a Trump rally? But somebody did take a shot at that man. 
I just want to know, you people on the left, is this really what you want? Have you become so emboldened that you would defy God and the citizens? Because the patriots understand that they're not fighting against flesh and blood. They're wrestling against principalities, evil and spiritual wickedness in high places. And they're putting on the whole armor of God to deal with you. You need to think about where you really taking this country. Because you look over in the countries you call third world countries and you see the devastation. What are you going to do when it's at your doorstep? As Dean Placco just explained, in the last um, two to three minutes or so, that's when Chicago police rushed to the scene to evacuate everyone from the secured area. Everyone, there were a number of reporters, um, cameramen out here, but as well as demonstrators, many of the demonstrators, um, I'd say between three to four hundred that had jumped this perimeter fencing. Right now, we see police continuing to talk to a guy that they've detained. He appeared to have been holding some type of stuffed animal that Chicago have, that Chicago police have in their hand right now. As these three people were being taken away by Chicago police, we saw a number of demonstrators knocking on the fencing, banging on the fencing, um, celebrating that these folks had been arrested. Again, we spoke to the organizers of these demonstrations earlier today, and they said, we intended on this being a peaceful protest. One of the fears here that is now a reality is the folks, the groups that have shown up without permit, but they've shown up, they've arrived to cause chaos, to cause disruption. You can see Chicago police right now, eight or nine of them continuing to try to, I don't know, make possibly negotiate negotiate with this guy, but he is restraining. Again, they're breaking down more fencing. They're breaking down fencing as we speak. As we speak, a guy with a hat on and some type of um, blanket wrapped around him. He just broke a fence, has on a mask. Police are trying to stop him. They are trying to rush these folks. We are watching the scene. Chicago police are walking up. They're moving in as we speak. They're moving in with helmets, with batons in their hand. Chicago police right now trying to replace this fencing, which has been torn down. Again, guys, I want to remind our viewing audience, Dane Placco and I, um, as well as Joni Lum, we've been out here for several hours since early this morning. We did not see this level of unrest. We did not see this level of violence or, um, or even chaos. We are now starting to see this. The area that we're speaking of, again, for those who are just now joining us, is Park 567, which is located right outside of the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church on the city's west side. You see officers right now trying to reattach this fence, um, but this group appears to be very um, uncompliant, if you will. We still see Chicago police um, that, have, that have detained two or three um, demonstrators as there are hundreds of journalists capturing this moment right now. There still are, I'd say, about maybe five to six hundred demonstrators that are inside of the park right now. Keep in mind this protest and march that initiated from Union Park, there were thousands and so the guidance that we heard within the last hours that everyone was going to march back to Union Park and then that's when we started seeing the fencing come down but Chicago police the brave men and women of the Chicago Police Department doing what they do best to patrol this crowd to get everything under control. We're now seeing Superintendent Larry Snelling and his command staff. Superintendent Snelling here on the scene talking to his officers, talking to his command staff. We do hear agitators screaming in the background saying, why are you arresting him? Why are you holding him? Police is trying to hold this group away. It appears, though, that they have cleared the scene. They've replaced the perimeter. We are seeing now officers stand shoulder to shoulder with helmets on, ready to address any 
any any folks had come that are not trying to do what the Secret Service and Chicago police have said. We're continuing to monitor this. <clears throat> and what you don't see out there is that LGBT community out there waving their flag in the face of all of that hostility. Because they know that their government promoted them as some type of inclusionary, protected class of people only to undermine the nuclear family and to create civil unrest in the community. They have become pawns. And it's tool to make this country totally socialist, fascist, communist, to change the trajectory of what the founding fathers had in mind when the Constitution was written. But you don't see them out there because they got enough sense to know now is not the time to have a parade. You know, we got away with it back in June. But right now, this is at a fever pitch because they know Kamala and her Jewish husband and their Bidenomic policies means the final end of Gaza. Bibi Netanyahu is not going to stop firing. Guess what? While we're watching the convention, they're still fighting in Gaza. While we're watching the convention, they're still coming across that border, bringing drugs, weapons, and more immigrants. This distraction is going to be the final thing that gives you the anarchy and chaos that you think you want. Do you really think that if these Democrats get in power, that you're going to have some type of peaceful and prosperous life in America? No. What you're going to have is what you see in other countries around the world. And you're not going to be safe. They are not the party of safety or uh, law. They're the part, party of wickedness, debauchery, and sin, and you know it. Stop playing. We'll watch a little bit more of this. ...situation, guys, because it it is not just breaking, but it's forever moving. Um, we don't know if these guys are trying to break more fencing, but what I have seen in the last five minutes, there are more and more police come to the area. They're trying to replace the fencing. We are your local news channel, Fox 32, that will continue to cover all of these developments, bringing, you, bringing them to you live on air and online. That is the latest here on the city's west side. This is going to be ongoing because this is only day two of their convention. It seems like a lot of people in government are underestimating the sheer will of the people. I can tell by my comments that people are so delusional that you have actual leftists coming in my comments trying to sway opinion when we've already decided we don't want Kamala. We don't want lying Hillary. We don't want none of the wicked, evil, debaucherous policies that are coming out of the Democratic fold we're adamantly against it and obviously these pro-palestinians are the very immigrants you let in are so we're going to see what really happens as we get closer to november but don't be like roland martin and don't be fit enough to address the stress and pressure that's going to be applied when you take when you try and attempt to take the rights of the masses of the people, of the patriots. That's it for now. Sound to you out of Detroit. This is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Support the nonprofit, Detroit's Black Thought and Action Collective. The cash app is in the description. As always, salute to all patriots. Keep your head on a swivel. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.